us who is who is the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that, guys? Well, you know, it's 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 Good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the latest edition of Views on the News. We've taken a break, in case you hadn't noticed. For the last couple of weeks, we've been on holiday, if you like, but in fact, I, I was extremely busy staging an event in, in London, and then it was my birthday, and I got taken to a show and fed at a restaurant, and now it's Father's Day, so we don't have a full complement of panel. But we do have co-host Tersia from South Africa. Welcome, Tersia. Hello, <laughs> and, happy, and Happy Father's Day. Thank you, yes. And Dr. Ty Wells from Kentucky, or is it Tennessee? Tennessee. But it's all good. Tennessee. It's all good. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Leeds, Buckingham Palace. It's all the same place. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I've never thought that's the case. But anyway, here we go straight into the show. It's been because, of course, we've had um, some time off. I've got some extra special. I've saved up uh, little video clips for you that you're going to love. You'll get those later on. Okay. So on Thursday in uh, Maiduguri, that's part of northern... Nigeria. Oh, Dave is joining us. Welcome, um, David. No worries. We thought you'd be celebrating Father's Day. Oh, well, that plus, ironically, I'm packing for my trip to Europe. So, oh, wow. Are you <laughs> He's getting dressed right now. That's right. <laughs> Boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> well, two, two weeks ago, where were we, David? Uh, we were in Notting Hill. We were having a wonderful time with uh, uh, about 250 uh, civilians and Richard Dawkins and uh, uh, that other guy, <laughs> uh. Lawrence Krauss. <laughs> Lawrence Krauss, right? I know. I'm only kidding. Yes, yes. And I've done the videos because, as you as you know, we had a professional camera woman there, mm -hmm. and she sent me the files, and I've edited them and. Uh, balance the sound and the vision and so on. So they're, they're all ready to be uploaded to our channel. And we're going to tease people by putting them out only to the members, first of all, mm -hmm. and then releasing them a week later to the general unsuspecting public. But at the same time, letting loose number two. So this is going to go on for six weeks because I've got six episodes out of that one event. Wow. It's going to be good. Yeah, it was phenomenal. It was really uh, nice, and uh, to uh, all of the speakers were really um, just excellent. Uh, and then the conversation uh, between uh, uh, Lawrence and um, and uh, uh, Richard was just um, so um, happily insightful, and you can tell that their camaraderie and their friendship come you know yeah. comes out, and it's really it was a very sweet thing. Yeah, yeah. And two standing ovations for yeah. Richard. Two. Yeah. Yeah. And and then we sold the, the painting of uh, Christopher Hitchens. Yes. Oh. I'm sorry yeah. you couldn't bid for it in, in in the US. Yeah, I got a, I was really jealous. Um so much so. Let me show you. What has he done? This is uh, I'm on tenterhooks now. I don't know. That I did About my you. own. Oh. <laughs> oh, look. Wow. And it's hanging in my Very office. nice. Very excellent. Yes. Well, there you go. Do you know, I don't want you to tell anybody about this because it is a bit um, uh, uncertain. And so it's top secret. I don't want it to get leaked out. But Lawrence wants to do more events together with us Wonderful. and and um we're looking at doing one in new york oh, and wow we're looking at getting neil degrasse tyson as the top of the bill oh wow 
and and we would be therefore selling or auctioning a portrait of Carl Sagan. Oh. Oh wow. Well, that I'm going to bid on. Okay, <laughs> great. That's okay. Lovely. We haven't got a date yet, but that's the it's in gestation this idea. Will it be made by the will it be painted by the same artist who did the uh a, a painting of the portrait of uh, Christopher Hitchens? Mike Lawrence, that I can't tell you at the moment because um, okay. uh, he's he's a very busy man now. He's, mm -hmm. he's painting mostly landscapes. Did you meet him? He came, of course. Oh, yes. We, we sat and we talked for quite a while. Mm -hmm. What a great yeah. guy. Yeah. Ask yeah, me yeah. a question while we're on the topic. Is Neil deGrasse Tyson an outspoken atheist, or is he still on the Wu train? Last time I checked, he was on Wu train. Well, uh, he, put it like this. He wrote the foreword to Lawrence's latest book, A Universe from... No, not A Universe from Nothing. Um, it's got two titles, which is foxing me at the moment. Right. In, in the UK, it's called... Um, uh, known unknowns, right? And in the US, it's called because they didn't want the connection to Rumsfeld because it's his mm -hmm. quote, of course. And the publishers called it, um, uh, well, I can't remember. The, yeah. There's an American title which is, uh, I'd have to look it up. I'm sorry, well, it, it's, it's yeah. the extent of knowledge or some, something like that, yeah. Mm. So there you go. Anyway, should we get down to the news and, and give sure. our opinions of sure. what, what uh, religion has been doing to humanity over the past, well, more than seven days now, because I've, I've got a couple of little clips that I've saved from previous weeks when, when we didn't hold this show because uh, we were taking a break. Uh, starting again with the, the first item, it's about Nigeria, where the northern part is called Borno State. And um, it's it's subjected to terrorism by members of the Boko Haram, the Islamist group. And you will be pleased to hear, I'm being ironic, definitely, that the latest atrocity they've committed was to behead seven farmers. Um, and and I I can I can add to that. <coughs> Sorry, it's I don't think it will be included in in this bulletin. But in Uganda, this uh, an offshoot of the same Islamist group. I think it uh, it just the news just broke this morning that they um, abducted six school children and um, attacked around about forty people or seriously injured. So it's not only um, in in uh, Nigeria; it's also in Uganda. Yes, that, yes. Uh, these delightful, these delightful followers of the the, yeah. the book um, are, are doing these horrific deeds. Yes, yes. Well, can you send me a link to that? I'll, I'll include it in next week's Global Atheist News. Uh, in I fact, will do that. In, in fact, maybe if you recover from your cold, you could perhaps do do a to camera piece for me. Let, let's see how it goes. I'll do my best. Yes, yes please. Get well soon. <laughs> right. Okay. So now we go to Ireland, where uh, they're f they're feeling shame and a sense of sorrow because a uh, a review has revealed that thirty historic abuse cases. You're all thinking in the Catholic Church, aren't you? <laughs> oh, no. This is the Methodist Church in Ireland. And apparently the Reverend David Turtle published the findings of a three-year review about how it dealt with abuse allegations. And they have looked at records from 1950 onwards. They found six cases involving ordained ministers, three cases involving lay employees of the Methodist church, and the rest, what, 21 cases, were uh, alleged to have been committed by lay volunteer leaders of their church. You, you know, John, um, I'll take the liberty of, of jumping in here. 
something that I'm really getting sick and tired of by now is it's the same stories Mm -hmm. Week after week, church after church, denomination after denomination. I watched um, a, a documentary about the Hillsong Church last week. And, 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 and one of the, the recurring excuses is, yes, but not everybody in the church is like that. And huh. that is something that I would like to address because the fact that I, I accept the fact that not everybody in the church is like that. But the church keeps on covering it up. Mm -hmm. And to, to me, that's the bad part. The mm. churches don't act against these people. And that makes it a little bit like, like a, a member of the um, Hitler Youth saying, well, not all Nazis are bad, you know. Some are right. actually good people. Uh, exactly. I, I just I, I feel the sense of ire and frustration mm -hmm. that that excuse is still given. Right, because even if it is five people, the re reality is is that it only takes one to make a scandal. Mm -hmm. And when it's 50, <laughs> and it's not just one, uh, but, it's, but it's everywhere on every continent, uh, in oh. every denomination, uh, you mm -hmm. realize that it's um, a, a disturbing trend which historically has either been ignored or swept under the rug, as they say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And our role um, as atheist or humanist, I feel, is to make sure we shine a bright light on this hypocrisy, this violence against children, this violence against women, um, um, and, and the violence of most faith traditions. Um, yeah, yeah. Even pacifist faith traditions are frequently violent against women in their own church, you know. And children, yes. You're right. Yes. So, anybody, so, anybody a little bit vulnerable. Yes. Yes, exactly. Except little beautiful little kittens. Right. I want to, make, <laughs> want to add to that point. We're always right. concerned about the trend. We're always looking at the trajectory, right? And yeah. what religion is really good at, or particularly any large group with a self-interest, in the lasting a long time is misaligning the argument of their opposition and mm -hmm. making it seem like they're arguing about something that's unrelated or right. so specific that it seems ludicrous. And it's just a straw man at that point. And so when we say, hey, there's a there's a great multitude of harm and inhumane actions taken against people, and it's orchestrated by this community that doesn't seem to have the interests of mankind at their heart and it's more about power and control for them they'll say well no there's one good person in here or look at this yeah. cavalcade of really great people it's like yeah. we're not talking about that we're talking yeah. about the trend that this is setting we're talking about the trajectory that it's putting our culture on and we're talking about this overall pattern that we're seeing over and over again well there's yes. harm and the cover-up harm and right. the cover-up harm and ignoring and mm -hmm. and i just want to make sure that you hit the nail right on the head david because it is the 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 trend that we're looking at and it's yeah. been the same trend for the last thousands of years. And so mm -hmm. when anyone comes up with the argument of like, well, there is good people, it's like, we're not talking about that. Look right. at this path that they're on. We're, yeah, it'll get hot and cold, but we're talking about climate here. Oh, well, climate change isn't real. That's another argument that the religious people are trying to force <laughs> too. But it, it's interesting that it's always on the same parallel, isn't it? Right. But anyway, yeah, don't let them uh, straw man you into a specific argument. It's that trend that we're looking at. Right. Yeah, yeah. We don't deny that there are good people in religions, but. Right. We want to focus on getting it better. <laughs> mm, right. Yeah. So we now go to the Southern Baptist denomination, the convention, which uh, contains 47,000 Baptist churches with a membership of more than 13 million, according to their website. And what's happened? Well, two churches have been expelled for having female pastors how dare they absolutely i mean really they uh, need to stop giving genders to j the pasta it's just the noodle that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> well well, well the, the the, the, right. the, you see in in some respects um i i agree with um i don't know if you've heard matt Delante says <coughs> Sorry about that. Matt Delahanty always says that um, 
in some respect, he has more respect for the fundamentalists like the Westboro Baptist Church who just stick to their guns and say, mm. this is what the Bible says, and they just go with that. And mm. uh, I actually, to, 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 I agree with that because at least they're being honest about what they stand for. And, and the religion that I used to belong to, to this very day, we still have a very strict policy on no women in positions of yeah. power in the church. Right. So, so um, I, 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 you know, women can be the, the Sunday school teachers, they can be the uh, worship leaders, but mm -hmm. please just don't give them any real power to, to do anything. Um, right. Not that I can understand why a woman would want to be a member of any church. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is that Matt supports the idea of fundamentalists because they're purely and honestly misogynistic. Yeah, can I can I touch on that? It's not so much I think both sides are being honest. It's just which is a better reflection of the source material, right? Yeah. And it's clearly not the one that's saying be kind, love everybody, and and right. it doesn't matter if you're different. It's the ones yeah. that can cite the prop that you're going to hell using their holy book on the posters and if anything mm. if there's any a way to drive people away from that p mm. put those people up on the pedestal and show them as this is a representation of what this yes. faith looks like when it's properly mm. represented right. it's, well, well these people are being very open so, about it because yeah. on their, their mission statement on their website says the office of pastor should be limited to men yeah and 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 these churches on the ones with female pastors are not in friendly cooperation with the, mm -hmm. the Baptist convention. Ooh, mm -hmm. friendly cooperation. I love that. Well, you know, this also shows the subjectivity of this and how it is really about power, right? And yep. There's Bible verses that, you know, women obey your men as slaves should obey their masters. I, yes. I'm, I'm paraphrasing Ooh. here. So, you know, when you get into um, that level of theology, <laughs> where your holy book basically says women are second-class citizens and slaves uh, don't have a right to anything. Um, mm. you, rather than everybody is equal and slavery should be abolished. Right. Um, mm. It shows uh, not only when these books were really written and who wrote them, um, yes. but, uh, but how the, the sin in it, if you want to call it a sin, is that You've got 2,000 years of uh, liberalization happening. And um, um, we know from the secular perspective the value of, you know, shared equality and living your true yeah. life and everything um, yeah. that, that religions just don't get because it's yeah. an all-boy network and, yeah. um, you know, um that's that's the purpose of the faith is to take your money and um and just you know live live within the confines of whatever the male figure is saying the theology is saying yeah 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 so 2000 years of ignoring progress they've had haven't yeah they? and and when it does come it comes as oh god said it so, oh, yeah, you can eat fish on Fridays. Or, you know what? There really isn't a purgatory. Uh, we mm. got that wrong. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. So all of a sudden, so what happens is the, the world becomes more liberal and open and religion gets dragged into modernity mm. yes, because yes. it prefers to stay in the dark ages. Yes, yes. It's something that, that, that I find really interesting um, on this topic of women in the church, I, you know, I, I, I make it a point of every now and again just confusing the YouTube algorithm, and I, I do yeah. that by by going. Um, firstly, I watch full advertisements of all these weird Chinese mixtures that that help men with the libido. That's the first thing, and the second thing is I go into far right um, fundamentalist religious um, YouTube sites, and I actually look at what they're saying. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just confuses the, the algorithm and it gives me very interesting um, things to look at when I can't sleep three in the morning. And I watched this very interesting um, YouTube channel that I don't recall the name of now, but they uh, they were criticizing Joyce Meyer for, for being a, a female uh, a 
uh, worship leader and, and 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 mega mega pastor, and I just thought to myself, myself, yeah, what what does Joyce Meyer think of this? You know, here she is, this mega pastor, female, strong woman, mm-hmm. and the people that belong to her own faith are saying that she's absolutely she should be condemned because a woman mm-hmm. shall not be a man, mm-hmm. and and she she doesn't say anything about that. You know, it's it's just. And I think that's what Mandela Hunty means when he says it's almost easier to to <coughs> to expose and to fight the 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 fundamentalists because mm-hmm. can you imagine a conversation between Joyce, Joyce Meyer and these men who say that she shouldn't be teaching in the church? I, I, I mean, that's a we self must set that up. We must we um, must set that up. <laughs> Uh, I, I also want to throw out another one too. Like we can we can chastise the religion, we can chastise the dogma and the philosophy, but it's ultimately the person that there's a point where there's an accountability assessment that needs to go on. Mm-hmm. And I've had conversations with people, and I'll and they'll say like, "You're always so hard on the Bible," and I'll be like, "Yeah, because it, it condones slavery. It says you can beat your slaves." And it's a, there's right. no phrase like that in the Bible. And this will be a person say it, and we can pull out their Bible, and I can on my phone. And I can say the verse and I'll show it to them and I'll present it to them in black and white. It says, this says you can beat your your slave and it's okay to own slave. And that as long as you don't die within two days, you're scot-free. Yes. And yep. they're like, well, this right. is the reason why. So like the, it's the reasoning right. on the person's self to be open to the idea that they follow a horrendous faith, like a horrendous right. protocol. Mm. Like that's yeah. the reckoning that needs to be happening because the it's yes. a terrible idea is going to be a terrible idea regardless. But someone who operates with a terrible mindset or a terrible philosophy, those are the ones that cause harm on communities and and culture. Yeah. And that's the one we need to pe- be holding people accountable. Not Christianity, but Christians specifically. I and just want to make sure we hold us to that. Here's the thing: mm-hmm. if you beat your slave to within mm-hmm. to nearly dead, you know, but. but and and he, after two days, he comes back to life. Does he come back with a near-death experience? Mm. <laughs> well. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll leave that. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Let's go to Sweden. Because uh, yes. <laughs> back in yes, lovely country to visit. Yeah. yeah. Back in in January, they had a Islamic book burning outside the Turkish embassy in yeah. Stockholm, and that sparked anger in the Muslim world. There's enough world. books you can burn books, burn them, <laughs> burn some and books. It, it it led to calls of weeks of protests, calls for boycott of Swedish goods, and it stalled. Sweden's application to NATO because uh, the Turkish uh, Prime Minister said he's not going to support it. Mm-hmm. Following that, in January, applications were made by a private individual and by an organization to hold more Quran burnings outside the Turkish and the Iraqi embassies in Stockholm in February. And police refused to grant those requests, arguing that the January protest had made Sweden a higher priority target for attacks. However, why is this in the news this week? It's because the Stockholm Administrative Court has granted appeals from the protest organizers and has overturned the decision of the police saying that security concerns were not enough to limit the right to demonstrate. So maybe these extra book burnings will go ahead. Mm, People don't realize that you have to buy the book to burn the book. Like (laughs) capitalism wins at the end of the day. Like Mm. if I wrote a book, let's say I wrote a book saying Tyrone has the best muscles on this show, right? I wrote that book and you guys were all angry and you bought a copy of my book and burned it. I'd be like, haha, I just sold three copies of my book. <laughs> burn it every weekend. You're going to have to, another, you can't burn it twice. You'll have to buy another copy. Like I win at the end of the day. Like everyone should look at a book burning as an opportunity that some, some group made a lot of money. Yeah. And it wasn't the true. people burning the books. 
I, I am, as a former librarian, as well as a scholar, um, I have a real problem with the idea of burning books. And it reminds me of, um, uh, you know, um, 1933. You know, um, I just don't I like and um, cannot support the idea of uh, burning. I mean, I know people have a right to it, uh, but um, I, I don't think that that is, um, that is not... Uh, activism to me that is just um, um, people Purpose. Who, Purpose. Yeah, Purpose. yeah I just I just don't um, feel that uh, burning books is because the next book that's going to get burnt is your book <laughs> mm. whatever that is or it's going to be the origin of species or it's going to be somebody else's uh, mm. book or it's going to be LGBTQ books and so on yeah. so this mm. burning of books this censorship of materials whether it's from the right or the left or the in between uh, to me is an affront uh, to um, um, uh, freedom and democracy not not well, a cause celebrate for it do you know i liked what um, lawrence said last two weeks ago in his presentation he pointed out that um, every new development in uh, you know human progress has been resisted including mm -hmm. writing when right. you know socrates and aristotle said it's going to ruin it's going to ruin society right. nobody will have to learn anything anymore you won't need to use your memory because it'll all be there written down right right has there ever been an effective book burning that has eradicated that source of literature from mankind and i can't think of a single example right and so my point would be I would rather see a book get burnt than a human get hurt. And if it takes a bunch of people raveling around to be like, ah, this work of literature and they burn it and then they go home and they feel better. Mm. No, that's a, all right, fine. Like we can still order the copy online. We can still have the copy available in other libraries. And, yeah. and it, I am not pro, you know, destroying, you know, in, intellectual property of or anything like that. And, mm. but yeah. as far as like freedom of expression, burn it if you want to burn it it's not hurting anybody and if anything it only brings more attention to the book sometimes yeah. it has a complete opposite effect but i do think that there's a messaging issue because it's easy to lose the forest for the trees in this one and if yeah. the message is we're burning a bunch of this holy book to show our disapproval or our distaste for this particular set of culture then it's only going to further push us apart into these separate tribes where right. uh, we can harm these people because we're more keen to burning their dogma. We don't see them as real people. Like yeah. I can definitely see that as like the stepping stone towards more violent actions. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. it is a silly thing. I have burned a book before only because I needed kindling for a barbecue that I had outside and it was a particularly poorly written novel. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not reading it again, but I didn't feel yeah. like any agitation so like i figure it's all yeah. down to context there's probably some good versions to why you should burn books if you need to do it for survival or good yeah. food but otherwise so that, well, that, that, I, other things I, I did miss the context a little bit but i i, I agree with um, you david i have a, a burning something is in essence it's it's a vi it's an act of violence right and and it it, it just makes a, a poor argument right. um, so if 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 it has to, like like Dr. Tai says, I, I suppose there are circumstances where, where it could be um, used to make a useful point, but mostly I think it's it's making a rather bad argument. Yeah, and I'd, I'd rather I'd rather use um, my power of freedom of speech to make yeah. better arguments than, than make yeah. lazy um, arguments. Right. Well, I agree that it's that argument too. I also just want to make it like it's not an act of violence against another person. And yes, we just, yeah, I just but, want to make that clear. But it's a violent action. I, I yeah, but yeah. not hurting another person. And in that regard, I'd rather see a thousand books get burnt than one person get honor killed in a country, or some person get hanged, or lynch mob go out after somebody. Yeah. Well, like, I don't burning a book and coming back home after the weekend. Okay, fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't think you have to make that equivalency. I think that I think everyone here rationally would say both of those things shouldn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I don't think you need, I, I, and, and that's the difference between um, activism and agitation. You know, yeah. these people are not activists, they're agitators. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Uh, and, they want, and they want the reaction. 
They're yeah. after the yeah. reaction, aren't they? Right. Mm -hmm. The activist is is maybe carrying signs, maybe making the political argument, you know, even mm -hmm. for or against their faith or whatever. Um, but the agitators are the ones who are burning the books and creating the censorship because it's yeah. an, another form of what well, in some places, places uh, especially if you go back to 1933 in Germany, they mm. burned the books first and then they burnt the people. Yes. <laughs> so yes. it's yeah. not necessarily one or the other, as your point that you're making, Ty, it's mm. that this is not a good road to go down at all. Yeah, yeah. It might be the thin end of a wedge. Yeah. Staying with books, yeah. here's an interesting thing, because in Illinois, they've taken the opposite tactic Mm -hmm. to what has been happening in Republican-led states where lawmakers have made it easy to remove library books that political groups deem objectionable. Right. Okay? So the, the, uh, the Democratic uh, leader of the uh, Illinois Senate, I'm not sure what his title is, it might be President of Illinois Senate, he says materials should not be prescribed or removed because of partisan or doctrinal disapproval. Mm -hmm. While certain hypocritical governors are banning books written by LGBTQ authors, but then claiming censorship when the media fact checks them, right. we are showing a nation what it really looks like to stand up for liberty. And what he means is they have prohibited Banning books. Right. <laughs> They've banned bans. Right. Uh, well, you know, it's interesting, um, as a side note, um, the American Library Association uh, has their corporate head headquarters in Chicago. Yes. Uh, in the same state that you're talking about this. So I'm sure yeah. they were very actively involved in this legislation. Yes, indeed. And, and they have set up their own... Uh, uh, description of how books should be treated mm -hmm. and uh, and I think that um, the 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 indication is that the democratic controlled states want to have a similar set of rules mm -hmm. either taking the ones from the American Library Association mm -hmm. or, or making up their own of a similar type yeah, you you can go in the, in the, on the ALA's uh, website, um, um, and they have a list of uh, uh, well, of course, there's this thing called the ban, ban Books Week, where they have um, all books that have been banned for religious reasons or sexual reasons or pro some other pro provoc um, a, a provocation, um, and what states are trying to do it, and and things like Maya Angelou. And, uh, you know, um, just wonderful books that um, everyone should be reading. And, um, of course, you know, the, it's about, you know, on the other side, it's about, quote unquote, community standards. But the community standard is, is to remove it uh, and to censor your ability to, to know, which yeah. is very dangerous. Indeed. So you'll be pleased to hear that a United Nations committee on the the committee on the rights of the child has recommended to english schools the united kingdom that we should repeal compulsory collective worship and the parental right of withdrawal from sex education and should not be allowed to discriminate on grounds of religion mm. in the admission of pupils to schools now, I find it insulting that we need to have those <laughs> recommendations made to us. Well, I'd like to I'd like to get into contact with that commission and ask them to do the same in South African schools, because that's mm -hmm. something that I've actively been fighting is uh, religious proselytizing in our schools, because that is a common occurrence in South African schools. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can send me the details of, of whoever um, made that sure. recommendation. <laughs> I could do that. No problem. Yep. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the time that I allocate to this show. Uh, I've got a couple more 
uh, items that I think I'm going to miss out because I really want to show you these clips that I've been saving up for a couple of weeks. And uh, you're going to love them. Uh, but I will, I will save one of the items as a final. So take a look. Take a look at this. This has got to be seen to be believed. Here we go. Lord, we surrender our voices to you. And then surrender the middle part of you, especially the genitals. Give them to Jesus. Many of us here will have to accept that an awful power of sin lurked there. But now we give our genitals to Jesus. <laughs> Look at Dr. Ty's face. <laughs> <laughs> shall, shall I shall I get my pickled baboons, Willie? <laughs> can, I, can I tell a joke? Can I can I tell a joke? Yeah. Do that. Go ahead. So, so this this just reminded me. There's an there's an Afrikaans joke. I'll translate it. Um, so this young preacher and his very attractive, beautiful young wife, they move to this very small town in the Karoo somewhere, and he wants to impress his um, congregation with a very fiery sermon about the, um, the ha hell and damnation, and he wants to really make a, a, a big impact. So he, he arranges with his pretty young wife. So this is many years ago when women were not allowed to wear um, slacks. He arranges with her. He's going to hoist her up into the rafters of the church building, and she has to sit there, and at the right time, when he gives the sign, um, she has to rain down hot coals upon the um, congregation, to, to give the necessary impetus to his uh, preaching and Fire something goes wrong and she falls and she grabs a hold of the rafter and she's hanging there with her dress and the, the minister shouts to the men in the congregation, those who look up will be sm um, smitten with blind, will be smote with blindness. And there's this <laughs> one old fellow and he says, Minister, I'm willing to sacrifice one eye. <laughs> well, I'm, go I'm, I'm going to offer this to Jesus. I hope he'll be pleased. What is that? That is a, a baboon's genitals. <laughs> In a crystal box. It, it's, Male variety. It's John's space. It's John's space eight. <laughs> British cuisine is very bizarre. I don't. I, I, I'm still trying to catch up on it. There, there, there is a story behind that. A couple of boys. I would I hope so. <laughs> a couple of boys that I used to teach went on to become. Um, uh, I don't know what their type, their job title would have been, but they worked for a biological company, and one of the things that they did was preserve specimens in in plastic boxes for sale to schools and yeah. they had a, a baboon died in the local zoo and they had the opportunity to dissect it and save any bits that they fancied and they saved that bit and sent it to me <laughs> well, on, you have to add john that it was on the eve of your um, second marriage at quite an advance no no actually it was my first marriage the, I, I, first Oh, it was I, your first marriage. I've got a long time ago. I'd recently, I'd recently got married and they thought I might need it. <laughs> naughty, naughty boys. Yeah. <laughs> so, they needed uh, their pastor, John. They needed that yeah. pastor to bless everything for you, you know. So it's all. Well, I was touched. I, I really was touched. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, now you can literally say for the man who has everything. <laughs> Well, you, you can see how much I treasure it because I've kept it to this day. Wow. Uh, even right. though the formalin has now evaporated through the plastic, so it's only <laughs> half full because that happens eventually. Mm -hmm. I do so, have I do have a million dollar question. Like, are we going to get back to the pastor talking about blessing genitals and have some context for that, or are we just going to go straight to baboon <laughs> testicles? And move Let, let's forward? hear let's hear your reaction to him, Ty. I don't. I imagine if I were to hear that whole sermon, 
it would make sense. But the thing is, in context, we can giggle and laugh. But the thing is, we all have genitals, and whether they're blessed or not is a completely different. That's the the silly part. Isn't genitals? The silly part is there's a giant being in the sky. You should all listen to me talk about them. And if you don't, I'm, that giant being in the sky is going to send you to a bad timeout zone. So like. Genitals are always going to be like, oh, it's a funny thing that we can all point and laugh at. But like this, the weird elephant in the room that no one aside from atheists are willing to point at is the God question. Mm. Well, I, I want to finish the story by telling you that that was the leader of the Jesus Army, which was a cult that was that occupied a, a small mansion outside of Nottingham. Okay, and they have they were subsequently disbanded. The reason they're in the news currently is because it's been revealed they were committing a lot of child abuse. And uh, these women have grown up and have now wanting compensation for the, the uh, agonies that they suffered in their mm -hmm. youth. One, religions are cults. Two, not surprised. Three, Amish. We should stop putting yeah. a lot yeah. of people that we... Like, it's happening yeah. right now. The fact that yeah. we don't... We're like, oh, that's a sad story. It's like, true, but it's happening right now with the Amish. Why are we still buying yeah. soap from them? Why do we still <laughs> allot land to them? Yeah. Dr. Tai, you said that you find it, uh, the elephant in the room is that the fact that people believe that there's this person in the sky worried about what we do with our genitals. Mm. But the, the other thing that strikes me as very unusual about that uh, video clip is that there's a whole congregation of people who are standing there Mm -hmm. Whether they are not listening to what the pastor is actually saying, so yeah. they must be in some trance somewhere, or yeah. they actually believe that it's possible right. to yeah, yeah. bless Jen that, that, that I mean, if, if I was a Christian, if I, if I stood in my church and the pastor said, I would be like, what the hell is he saying? Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. So, well, so these... I think that there's no reaction of, what the hell? Um, mm. That boggles my mind. It, it just these, these people were obviously lapping up his genitals. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, a couple of um, more pleasing articles. A former mayor of a small town council in the UK blogged back in 2008 um, questioning why circumcision of children was necessary mm -hmm. if God made man in his own image. Mm -hmm. Now, when this came to light, somebody he, he's now the mayor of the town. Oh, that's a good tranche. I, I, that's good. I like that. Yeah. Good, good and, question. And, but people have been dredging his, his ancient blog, and they've discovered he said this. And a fellow councillor has said the remarks were nothing short of anti-Semitic and anti-Muslim. What? So they voted, they voted to take the mayoralty away from him, and he's now resigned from the council. Wow. Wow. Just for asking a, an actual healthy question. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a good point. If we're made in yeah. God's image. Why do we modify our bodies afterwards? Like, right. Yes, yes. That's a good thing. I mean, you look at a sheik. Right? Is that a Sikh? I'm sorry, a Sikh. Who was like, we don't cut our body hair because that's yes. the way how God made us. Like, yes. there's there's groups that like figured that out. Yes. It's a good question to ask. Yes. Wow, how terrible. Yes. It's almost as if this isn't based on any form of logic. <laughs> well, and, 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 and just just to add to, to that, um, Ty, even even if so, let's say that God made a mistake and discovered afterwards that oh dear, I didn't actually want them. To be uh, created with this little flap of skin, hmm. can't he just sort of make a little tweak and have the next right. generation born without it, mm -hmm. or right. or just change his mind and say, "Oh well, yeah. shit happened. You know, things right. go wrong. Yeah. We create things." Right. Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. yeah, I mean, this this, this whole compared idea. to compared to creating a universe, that should be an easy modification. Right. Absolutely. Oh. Yeah. It, it just, you know, this it's mutilation. Um, it's yeah. ritualized mutilation. And it's the same thing with clitoridectomies. Right. Um, it's, you know, it's a good way to affirm that you're deep in a sunk cost fallacy when you realize, oh, I don't believe in a God, but my penis is already screwed up. So, yeah. uh, 
Yeah. No, it's yeah. it's well, you know violence, more violence. This article agrees with you. Yeah. With us, because the the National Secular Society and an organization called Fifteen Square, which is a registered charity that supports men dealing with the physical and psychological problems arising from circumcision, mm -hmm. they have written to the town council saying, in a free and open society, religious beliefs and practices must remain open to scrutiny and debate. Right. Individuals yeah. should be afforded respect and protection, but ideas should not. Mm -hmm. And it, they pointed out that circumcision was listed as a harmful practice by the United Nations. Mm -hmm. And in 2015, a British judge described it as more invasive than some forms of FGM mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. held that it met the de definition of significant harm under the Children Act of 1989. And mm -hmm. uh, worse, worse to top this off with the worst news, three boys have bled to death in recent years after circumcision in the UK, mm -hmm. and 11, in, in just one year, were admitted to hospital, just one hospital, with life-threatening hemorrhage or sepsis. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. And one yeah. pediatric surgeon said in 2016 that circumcisions were leaving children maimed for life. Right. It's so bad that sometimes in the U.S. there's also another statistic where they mess up the circumcision and just like, we'll just make it a girl, and they just well, go from there. Do you guys know about that? There's yeah. some really cool. Doc oh, there's a nice. There's a couple of documentaries on it. It's not as uncommon as we like to think. But the main Good. thing is, it's not a foolproof surgery. There are a lot yeah. of complications that come about it, and the overall benefit is what, at the end of the day, like you. It, 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 the only benefit. I put that in quotes. Right. The only benefit is you get labeled like it. It's like um, what did they used to do to cattle? They used to brand them, didn't they? Right. To yeah. say you're mine, and that's all it is. Mm -hmm. But in, in 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 South Africa, um, and and I think this could add some balance to the the argument. It's not only about religion. As humanists, we should also examine all forms of human culture, because in South Africa. We have um, amongst the Kosa, especially the Isikosa community, they have a ritual circumcision. So when a boy turns 16, thereabouts, mm -hmm. um, it's a coming of age ritual. And mm -hmm. it still happens all mm -hmm. over South Africa, especially in the Eastern Cape. Um, there's actually, um, they call them initiation schools. Um, Dr. Tai, if you want to Google that, you'd find it shocking. Um, well, and what, what happens is that these boys are, are um, inducted into these uh, initiation schools and they have traditional uh, healers and they go into the bush and they are then ritually circumcised in groups and I think more than I'm, I'm going to thumbs up so if you have if you on the internet and anybody can you can google how many young boys in South Africa die every year because yeah. of botched circumcisions mm. and and how many are um, have the have to have their penises amputated, oh. and uh, it's 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 and these boys are in in their teens, and and the trouble is that if they are not circumcised, then they are not seen as fully worthy men in their right. community it's, because it's a coming um, of age yeah. ritual. That's yeah. right, and yeah. and as as a humanist, I I say we should examine all ideas. Not only religious ideas that are bad ideas, but also cultural practices right. that are harmful. And and find it. I'm I'm all for coming of age rituals, but find something that doesn't risk your life. You know, right. like a bar mitzvah. Key, key, key of the door works okay. So right. that was all. That was all rather gruesome. And I want to end on a lighter note. Okay. So so listen to this. There's a town in Poland on the Baltic coast called Hell, H-E-L. And there's a bus that takes people to Hell. And the number of the bus has been 666. <laughs> it's been a very popular ride for tourists, apparently. But the local bus operator announced this week 
that the number 666 bus would no longer run to hell. They were going to renumber it 669 from, from the twenty uh, four. Well, from the if it makes anyone feel better, the, the area code for Southwest Louisiana is still 666, and they're not changing. <laughs> yeah. So, well, local, I, local, local media have said that the bus company has acted under pressure from Christian groups no, to push right. for this change, but it was already thinking of returning to the old number amid a public outcry. Wow. So there you go. Well, it might well, end. Well, uh, you know. I, I just want to say, if, if you can all come to South Africa, I can arrange that I will put, I will, I will get a specialized number plate, 666, and I will take you on two trips. The Probably. one will be to Hells Wichter, which is just down the road, which is in Afrikaans, uh, in English means Hells Heights, which mm -hmm. is a beautiful scenery with lots of wineries. And then we actually have a, a farming community called the Hell, as in the Hell. And I can take you there as well. And it will be a fantastic trip. I guarantee we can mm. get the number plates and we can go there. Just say when. <laughs> is, there, is there a brand of wine called Hell's Wine? Yeah. Uh, Hell's Wichter, definitely. Yeah. Hell's, Hell's Heights. Um, yeah. the, the, so, so, yeah. So in Afrikaans, we're not scared of going to Hell, you know. We just Good. go up Quite to Hell too. Heights and into the mm. Hell and, right. and, yeah, the Hell. Right. So you can come to South Africa and visit the hell. Well, you know, I don't know if this is in outside of the U.S., but um, if you board a plane, there's no row 13. Hmm. Because apparently <laughs> the number 13 is bad luck. If you go into a building, 11, 12, 14, yeah. usually there isn't a 13th floor. So if you ask... Yeah, I, I only feel bad for the people in Iceland who needed the bus and didn't realize the numbers changed because they'll be like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, yes. <laughs> I'm going to play the outro. So thank you very okay. much. You've been wonderful. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope thank you me. have too. Say bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Russia was, was the Pope appealing for peace or were he praying for peace? And, and the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that?